I'm Mark Dresner and this is Forward Focus, a special interview series featuring experts and leaders at the forefront of innovation. Forward Focus is brought to you by FEI, the annual Front End of Innovation Conference, now entering its 13th year. Joining me today is John Crombie. He is the founder of Upstart Product Development and a former principal engineer with R&D at Johnson & Johnson's Ethicon. John, welcome to Forward Focus. Thank you. John, for starters, would you define innovation for us and maybe based on that, tell us what you think some of the misconceptions are around innovation today? Well, innovation has some basic components. You start with an idea. It could be a good idea or a bad idea. But if that idea is expanded and built upon, perhaps it becomes unique, unique enough to become, say, a legal entity, a patent. If you take it further and it has a true impact, now you're to the level of innovation. But balancing that is a risk aspect. If you look at risk, risk management is about defining the risk, analyzing the risk, and then mitigating the risk. Mm -hmm. So already I've given you a definition of innovation. I defined innovation. I can define the risk around an innovation. And if you formally do that, now you know what you're dealing with in the innovation process. Mm. Then what you do is you analyze what are the high risk areas of a project. Companies are used to doing that technically, but in wide open space, they don't go ahead and quantify that. If they focus on that using market research, they can actually get a nice risk profile into what they're getting involved in. And that will help define the actual product. Mm -hmm. Last is mitigating. And you mitigate the risk, quite honestly, with best practices in product development. And all companies in innovation, the only place they really feel comfortable is best practices in product development. Mm -hmm. And no one looks at the front end of innovation. And part of innovation is not just the invention itself, but in practice and in play and in, when, it, when it makes it out to market or the real world, as, as it were. Exactly, some people say, oh well, you know, we have incremental innovations and then we have game-changing, big disruptive innovations. But I would say, if it's an innovation, it must be disruptive, it must make change. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't lowball the importance of innovation mm -hmm. by saying, well, a mere change to a product that gets launched and people like a new feature is an innovation. Mm -hmm. John, when we talk about innovation, what do you think some of the misconceptions are out there? I think the biggest misconception is that Innovation cannot be a true process. So innovation, first of all, in my mind, is a process. And so the aspects of that process that I think today are not fully understood and are somewhat abused, first of all, is the process itself. And then it's all understanding and use of the customer. I think we don't maximize that. And we actually have the completely wrong customer most of the time. Mm -hmm. Then we get into brainstorming. I think we misuse brainstorming and I have a completely different approach to the output of brainstorming and the output of prototyping. And yet, I see people touting how iterative they are and how wonderful that makes their organizations and their practices. And in truth, in process excellence and process improvements, you reduce iteration because it's waste. Mm -hmm. So I look at it like actually your goal is to reduce the iterations in that development cycle and streamline it you build upon, you do not go back and repeat. You're going a step farther back here then, right. when you're thinking as medical device company, which is different, by the way, in terms of how you're moving toward innovation and, and product development for devices than, say, a major pharmaceutical um, creating a new pill, a new medication, right? Absolutely. A pharmaceutical company will look at drug interaction what we fail to look at is device interaction uh -huh. with the body. And we're perfectly capable of doing it. And quite honestly, it's a lot more understandable than drug interaction. Yeah. So yeah. it's low hanging fruit that we ignore. So then the question comes up, well, what is the use of this customer that I've been talking to? Very simply, I have two choices now, and I'm talking about real innovation. Mm -hmm. My choice is I go with what the body wants, I reflect that, and I make it acceptable to my customer. It, and it's going to be a new technique, but the results they get directly achieving what the body is trying to achieve is going to overcome any resistance. Or I say, I'm going to compromise with your techniques, but I'm still going to achieve what the body wants. And I'm not going to compromise what the body wants for your techniques. So I'll use everything in your techniques I can to achieve what the body wants. But what I won't do is just make your current techniques easier. 
That's the difference in innovation and just good product development. You mentioned prototyping which I, I, I can't wait to hear your response to this one. We were talking about misconceptions and you know the mantra around prototyping is do it early, do it often. What's wrong with that? So quite honestly, prototyping is ab abused. And in this day and age, we can prototype anything and make it work and it gives these false senses. But I get even more basic on that. What is the purpose of prototyping? And I hear it's to develop the product so you can learn about it and so you can come up with the actual solution, you can come up with better solutions. So what is the purpose of prototyping? It's not to make iterations of prototypes, try them out to refine it. The purpose of prototyping is to define your requirements. Mm -hmm. By that I mean, you take a prototype, and the doctor says, this doesn't cut well enough. So you make it sharper, or you improve it. And then he says, okay, this is fine. Once you get to success, you're only halfway done. Because if you know what is good enough, you also need to know what is bad enough. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is actually stage prototypes to fail. So you get a limit. Again, anybody in any process, control, or development knows you need an upper and a lower limit. But what do we do with prototyping? We try to get that upper limit, upper limit, and when he says, I love it, we think it's success. Uh -huh. And you know what? We don't know what that lower limit is. And most likely, there are plenty of users who it's not enough for them. Mm -hmm. But if you take a prototype and you refine your requirements and get to true specs, now your prototype becomes a tool for requirements management. What I do at that point, I take my prototypes, I gather them all together, I throw them away, and I have a beautiful list of requirements which are high value to this customer, which meets their needs. And I can take that list, I call it the list. Once I get to the list, I can take that list to any product developer any engineer, any scientist, and I say, I need devices, I need components to meet these requirements. Mm -hmm. And if I refine it enough, anything they come up with that meets a requirement will be part of my solution. I don't even have to now babysit it anymore. If you right. refine your requirements enough, it defines a product enough that the performance is gonna be built in. So the whole goal of prototyping, to define those requirements to the point of, I don't need a solution, the solution's created itself. I am just managing the flow of Walking information. It along. Yeah. It's doing it itself because I have the right process in place. Yeah. That's and that's the highest execution of innovation that I know of. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. John, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. I really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Thank you. And that concludes this episode of Forward Focus. If you'd like to learn more about FEI, the annual front end of innovation conference, now approaching its 13th year, please visit us online at www.frontendofinnovation.com. Until next time, I'm Mark Dresner. Thanks for tuning in.